Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Race and Social Weekend Preview. You will know that we've been stacked out this week doing Cheltenham previews. Tonight, we've got no big guns like Matty Batu and Noah Hulan, just a couple of water pistols, so to, so to speak, and uh, <laughs> me and Dawn. Dawn, welcome distraction to uh, Cheltenham this weekend. It is, Joe, but I think this is penance for all my sins during the week and an offending couple of pictures from Dublin Racing Festival that you've given me. Instead of Hail Mary's, handicaps. No <laughs> I, was wait I was waiting for you to find me something in Jebel Ali. It's another bit of penance as well. <laughs> well technically, it's not my fault because they're the ITV7 races, so blame ITV. I, I beg forgiveness. I beg forgiveness. Hold on. There, there it is. <laughs> Even though China is around the corner, it's a uh, it's pretty good Saturday, isn't it? It's actually really, really good. And uh, I'm just going to throw in the F word too. We've got Super Saturday in Maidan as well. And real good representatives over there we will do at the end of the show. So you have a Super Saturday, you've Kelso, you've Navin, you've Donny. We've got all this. And it's 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 bumper to bumper. And like I keep saying, Joe, we need to start thinking beyond Chelsea Baby as well. You know, you've Aintree, you've Punchestown, you've way more beyond. And uh, I think you could pick up some a few tasty winners here this weekend. Definitely. Boost the Channel Festival Fund, won't it? <laughs> That's what we need. So if you don't mind kicking off, Dawn, we're going to start off at Calso. Five races from there. First race, the 115, Novices Limited Handicap Chase, two mile five. Seven runners, seven to four favourite. Sherlock O'Jack, um, what's your idea of winning this? Uh, I couldn't see past Sherlock O'Jack. I'm glad you pronounced them before me. I was going... Sherlock Jack, Marion Dance, Marion Dance, girl. Look, he won his first maiden hurdle for Dan at Leicester. Um, he bet Ollie Murphy's good horse. Let's have another. He won a two mile novice at Weatherby in January 2020. He doesn't really extend. I went back and had a look at two races, but he doesn't need to, from what I could see. Um, he was sixth in a November hurdle and Bold Endeavour was third in that race, who has been second to Oscar Elite, who we've been talking about a little bit in the Reynolds town. Um, he fell at Utah that are at the second. I'd forget about that. That was a clumsy mistake. And uh, won at Lingfield 31 days ago on good to soft, hands and heels, 12 length win. Easy, I'm not gonna go on a waffle fest. He's my standout winner, Joe. Yeah, the, I did like him. Seven to four might be a bit short for me. I like actually like Castle Rush, Castle, Castle Russian. Um, I think one thirty underestimates his ability mainly because he's had two one seats so far. It's very unlike me to go for a horse who isn't a bold jumper, as you know. I, I love a bold jumping type, and he's watching his falls. They're not actually falls. Like I still said that unseats, and the last one was a very weird. He seemed to brush through the top of the fence, landed a bit steep. And uh, the jockey was out the side door, so to speak. But I do think he would have won that race. It was four out. He was still travelling nicely. I do think, I know, sort of lifts and butts. So I do think he would have won. And the horses that did finish in front of him that day, the front three, 140, 138 rating. So I do think this 130 does underestimate his ability. And I think at five to one, I think he's well worth a punt to go close in this. So moving to the 150 council now, the more battle hurdle, two miles. Always a highly competitive race. Uh, Cormier last year's winner is back for more. There's a couple of Irish raiders in there, Dawn. Um, can you tell us anything about them? Love both of them, Joe. Love the favourite, Matt Teague. Four to one, seven to two. Yeah. Was with Jim Bulger. So I'm going to go just a little bit of flatty here. He was um, sixth to Luxembourg in the majority. He was second to Fastnet Crown of Michael O'Callaghan's, who's running in Maidan tomorrow. So wouldn't it be cool if the horse is winning and Fastnet Crown yeah, yeah. is winning in Dubai? In really, world, really yeah. cool. So cool. Um, he won his maiden at Leopardstown as a two-year-old. He has had a grade two win in Otoy, so I think that set him up nicely. Emmett's won it with the shunter in 2021. Donna Myler's up. Donna Myler is riding out of his absolute skin. Um, yeah, I really, really like him. He, when he went to Emmett's after Jim's, he, uh, he won in August at Sedgefield. And then here we go. This is the good bit. 
I love looking at this. He was ninth to lossy mouth in her juvenile at Christmas. Galar Marku was second. Nuzaret was third. And Nuzaret and Cougar, Cougar was eighth in there, which I keep saying he made a bit of a mess of that race. But like, this is what I love, the lossy mouth bit. But then I go the Luxembourg bit as well. It's like, it's, it's so cool. It's, I just love digging into it and reading it. And he's absolutely fascinating. And then I go over to Colonel Mustard because we've got El Fabio form, El Fabiola form in there, State Man form in there. He was third to State Man in the county hurdle, um, second to Echoes and Rain, uh, third to Sir Gerhardt last year at the Dublin Racing Festival, and seven to the entry to poor old Tree Stripe Life, who, you know, he was going to be a very good horse. Before that, was he? In the kennel gate behind John Bond, I'm sure he was. Yeah, he was. He was yeah. indeed. Yeah, he definitely was. I have him here in my notes. Second, yeah, Ascot, December yeah. 2021. And he's got an entry for the premiere uh, at 20 to 1. He's carrying 12 stone. Lorna Fowler knows what she's doing. She's also a very good showing judge. She gave my horse, racehorse to riding horse of the year a couple of years ago a lovely lady and uh kieran buckley's up and he's taken three off so mcteague is absolutely fascinating and colonel mustard that's solid solid form too joe so i'm i'm split i am split i can't lay either way but i might try and do a little bit of a forecast yeah yeah anything that emmett mullin sends over the handicap is well worth a second look isn't it Definitely. And especially with that shunter, you know, yeah. I, I, you can't look past that. No, no. I mentioned Caitlin Quinn's got right on this, Teddy Blue. Caitlin Quinn is value for five pounds, that's for sure. And a lot of trainers have clued onto that and they use him a lot now. I'm going to go with 12 to 1, last year's winner, Cormier. Um, I backed him to win this last year, actually. He won that off 134. He's 136 now, which isn't too harsh, really. He was last seen over hurdles with a respectable sick in the Greatwood in November. I thought that was a, a great run. That was a strong race. Um, since then, he's had two chase runs. Disappointing. But to me, he doesn't screen chaser. He's a speed little hurdler. And at 12 to 1, Sean Quinlan, Brian Ellison. Brian Ellison, I, I love his horses. And up north, you've got to take note of him. That's where he trains. But when he targets these bigger races, you've got to take note of Brian Ellison. So it'd be Cormier for me each way, 12 to 1. Um, I'll be quite confident he'll be there or thereabouts in the end. I move on now to the Premier Novice Hurdle, grade two, two mile two. Again, I looked at this race and I was thinking some of these I haven't even like really seen run, heard of. But Karachi Castle, I think he needs more cuts. He was a non-runner at Musselburgh on their trials afternoon due to going. Now, there is a horse in here, actually, and I thought he'd be a lot shorter. 72 favourite, Nimeon Lyon. Um, you wouldn't be impressed with this. Third in the Tolworth. Um, that's oh. the su superior form on show. He was ex flatty, trained by Andre Fab, so from France. So there's one for you, Dawn. Ex flat. Lovely, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. A bit unlike me. <laughs> this bit... is getting me now excited. Keep going. <laughs> no, I just think the the French form is very, very good at what from what I understand. I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell the flat form. But um the Tolworth form and the, and the flat form, the ground is key to him. I think he'll whip round here. Um why he's seven to two and not shorter. I'm baffled by it. Maybe because it's Kerry Lee trained, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, seven to two would do for me and Nimi online. I think uh, a bit like solo last weekend, he could be the um one of the bets of the day for me in the grade two at Novice Hurdle. So over to you, Dawn. Right. I, I'm in a three way here. So <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> so first, OK, my case for Snake Roll. I really liked him the day he ran against Grey Dawning. Grey Dawning won that day. Obsessed, obsessed with Grey Dawning. Um, he's a very good point winner for, for Lucinda Russell and... Derek is oh, Derek Fox is up. Um, he was a lovely winner at Warwick, raced very keenly. But if he settles, you know, I just think he didn't settle that day up against Grey Dawning. And then you've got his third to Tamiris. 
<laughs> one of the supreme fancies. So you have a decent bit of form there. Um, yes, he races keenly, but if he races keenly enough and stays in front, I think he will stay. Then I looked at Fergal O'Brien's horse, a seven grand purchase in September 2021. Four wins, two seconds for Fergal um, after leaving Henry de Bromheads. He bet, Henry, uh, he bet uh, Angel's Dawn, who is a very good Yates mare over here. She came down in the Irish National yeah. Trial of Punches town. And um, he was fifth to notice the close in a maiden hurdle, hurdle in 2019. Notice the close is also a very, very good horse. So you have a nice bit there. You've also got a bit of Outlaw Pete form in there. Um, and Outlaw Pete was here we go third to constitution hill at sandown on con yeah, hills yeah. outing so you know you kind of go back to that if you're looking to make a case but i thought he was a really really good price at 14 to 1 with what he's won and a seven grand purchase we talk about champ kylie being 5800 you know so my last but not least for noli Noli, I hope I'm saying that right. Emmett Mullins again. Will he have a double? I think he may. He may even have a triple. But um, yeah, he's three to one, 11 five. He was bought firstly from Ella Marie Holden. Now, Ella Marie Holden was who had John Bond and then went on to be a lovely points winner. He was second to Willie's Il Atlantic. You know, who was second in the bumper to Stellar Story last week, Storyteller's brother. And um, he was third at the Dublin Racing Festival to A Dream to Share. You know, the one that the, the Gleason's horse that JP McManus has now gone on and bought, who's five to one for the champion bumper. He's by Kaftara, and I love to see Kaftara's because I mourn that sire gone now. He was top national hunt sire for a reason. Um, for Noli, he's entered in the Coral Cup at 20 to 1. He's entered in the Martin Pipe at 50 to 1. Should he run the way I think he will tomorrow? Um, he definitely won't be 20 to 1 or 50 to 1 wherever he goes. So out of the three of them, I've made three cases. I've probably twisted everyone's head, but um, I think for Noli is the one for me. Or for okay. Noli. <laughs> no leave for dawn. So we move on to the three o'clock now. Handicap hurdle, again, highly competitive. But at least we're getting three places in this race, and I'm definitely an each way punter when it comes to this field. Who do you like in this dawn? Some nice prices on the show, that's for sure. Very nice. Yeah, I've kind of gone again. Not the easy way, Joe. I went for. Uh, a tight price and then I went for a whopper and the whopper you're gonna laugh at but I leave that to last and I'd say you know what way I'm going with that oh yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah. um yeah Santos Blue Ben Sutton takes seven pounds off Dan Skelton again so he's carrying 10 11 taking seven off um one of Chep's so most recently beating no, no tonic, very, very comfortably. No, no tonic has, I like to move it form. So we're going off that. One of his handicap hurdle at Weatherby, edged a little right, but still stayed on. So you wouldn't mind that. Um, Sporting Mike, who was second to him, was seven to Inniston, who, you know, we had Niall on and Niall Road, Inniston. And Inniston is half brother to Delta work and Jazzy Matty. And that was a great handicap at Sandown. So it's just to mark him up as well. He's got a supreme entry at 66 to one at Sport and Mike. Um, but he's by Santos Blue, he's by Blue Brazil, same as Con Hill. So what's not to like either. Um, now, <laughs> this, is the same horse. this is the horse I think it is. He spends more time on at the back of the telly every time I see him. But we live in hope. Why do we make these speeches and why do we love racing? Because they come back. Horses with form come back. Dallas, they picked yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I could even say it right. Fifth to Gallop in the Champ in the Martin Pipe 2019. Third to Carefully Selected, the Tiestes winner, Punches Town 2020. Um, ex Giggins Town. He's a Spanish moon as well. 
El Fabiolo's daddy. Um, he's got 12 stone, Henry Brooks on him. He pulled up behind Laham Press, but he was still in a race with Laham Press. Uh, Diane Sawyer has him now. Mary Lewis owns him. It's been 214 days since he won, or it could be 2000 and something. Day. I think it could be in the thousands, actually. I think I've it's missed. Gonna be, it's not going to be 200. I guarantee you that. I think it's 2000, Joe. <laughs> Three o'clock. It's 2000, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I missed the number. I was being kind. Anyway, he's 33 to 1 for a fun bet. I'm interested. Dallas the pick dons. But if you want no, to be sensible. No, no, I'm wrong. Last win was 1st of August 2022. Oh, okay. So 214 days. So you see, there's still hope at 33 to 1. Feels um, like 2000. <laughs> I know. he he's. I, I remember him at Leopardstown. He done Jack's leg one of the years as well. So, <laughs> but he's, um, it's the gallop in this champ form uh, that I, uh, that, 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 that I really like. That's my case for him. And I'm sticking to that. And he was an old inmate. So 33 to 1, 50 cent each way. What harm. It's less than a bar of chocolate these days, but um, I have every faith in Santos Blue. Okay. Yeah, the one I like is um, one for Richards, Danny, Danny, Danny Mucks on board. Now, son, he's another who tried chasing, not from two, went back early last time. He was six in a handicap at Charlton on trials day. That, was a, that run was fair enough, to be fair. It wasn't great. It wasn't a disaster. It, it, you should just put him just right for this. Going back to last season, he won the grade two we just spoke, spoke about. He, he won that on the card on this yeah. day. Um, he was in fourth in an entry grade one behind Three Shop Life and Mai Tai and the North North Lodge of Scotlands. That's solid form. Two from two at Calso, I think 13 to two each way. That's a solid, solid bet. Nicky Richards, he's a, he's a brilliant trainer. And he's been around the yeah. block. He, know, he knows the time of day. Danny Mack, Great jockey. He's got a great future ahead of him. And uh, yeah, everything points to a good run for now, son. One last one at Calso. The 335 Premier Chase. Do you want me to go first, Don? Oh, yeah. Gentleman first for a change. <laughs> Give the big speech for your boy. Well, there ain't no speech this, this time. He's not 50 <laughs> to 1 like last time. But, but 8 to 1 is fair enough. Obviously, Zamza is now an on runner. He's going to Newbury, as we thought he might do. But um, Lamy lost 11 to 8, the Shunter 15 to 8, and Empire still 13 to 2. But the standout one for me is wishing and hoping. Uh, like we just said then, he won't be 50 to 1 for this, but 8 to 1 is fair enough. Yes, he's 13, and at the weights, he looks like he has it all to do. But I was going through some of the form and of the others and their style. He will get a freebie out in front of here. And if this horse gets a freebie out in front and he jumps like he can, he will once again jump them into submission. Um, he won last time on soft at Sandown. He is a better horse on better ground. Good, good soft is ideal for him. He gets that here. So, it, taking everything into account, if he starts taking lengths of them, we know like can. Is there one good enough in behind to get to him? Mm, possibly not. I don't think they'll be able to chase him down as quick as they're like. And I do think at eight to one, he is massively underappreciated in this so he will do for me for a, a second victory like I said not 50 to 1 there'll be no big celebrations but 8 to 1 is nothing to uh, scoff at is it Dawn? No definitely not and again like we say it's for the Cheltenham Festival piggy bank you know that way I'd say that's where the 50 to 1 winnings went did it? All I'll just spent. put that on, on Constitution Hill to the champion at all easy money Oh well state man will eat us <laughs> <laughs> You would have been better off buying him a bag of carrots instead, <laughs> you know. <laughs> now, I was looking back at this and I kind of went, the God, there was some pre great previous winners. Like, you've got definitely red in there. You've cloth cap. You've not swell. Like, you know, you kind of, you think about these old legends. So wishing and hoping you go, he is, well, he is an old legend, really. I don't like using the word old because I think it's only a mindset anyway. 
yeah. um, you're only as, as old as you feel or the one you're feeling, as they say over here. But um, I, 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 I didn't listen to you last time. I think I may this time. I will make a case for my other two. Um, I did have a little bit for Zanza, but I know Zanza is elsewhere now. So Limmy Loss <laughs> with an accent. Harry and Dan, um, I'm I'm dying to see a bit of aeroplane action again, Joe. I'm just sad I'm not seeing it as much unless he's been told off. So I've been practicing <laughs> out the back garden instead. Um, I like that he beat Remastered in the Coral Gold Cup in November and he ran so bloody well, you know. Korak Rambler, Coach Rambler, whatever you call him, he was fourth. Bustleton, Joseph's good horse, fifth. Um, he changed trainers from Tim Vaughan to Dan Skelton. It seemed to do him, you know, the world of good. Um, two wins on the bounce and Bangor on D in November. Um, he beat Lord de Manil, who has a Kim Muir entry and a grant. He was a Grand National Trials winner at Haydock. So I really, really, really like Les Milos, the shunter, my old friend, the shunter, who won at Kelso, who knows Kelso. And I'm just waiting for him to, to come back to what he was. And he is, we talk about these gorgeous horses, Joe. I don't know whether you've seen him in the flesh. He is a beaut. He's an absolute beaut. Um, last time he was fourth at Layston, at, at Lace, at Nace, <laughs> to your old mate, Drop the Anchor. You like him, don't you? You like him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Looking after him where he heads to Cheltenham exactly yeah so uh he was good in that he kept on well he seemed to come back he won the plate at Cheltenham 2021 um he was second to protect 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 I can't even speak and it's been not a lot, the been a long week. <laughs> you know who I mean <laughs> the other error play uh he was second to him at Aintree and he was fourth to home by the Lee in 2020 at Cork I know you think a lot of home by the Lee so if we could See what we used to see with the shunt. I think he's got a very good chance, especially with the way he ran against Drop the Anchor the other day. But Le Milos seems to stand out for me. Okay. Well, that's it for the action at Kelso. We're going to move to Doncaster now. Just one from Doncaster, the quarter past three, the Grimthorpe. Always a brilliant race. Some old favourites in here. Does he know he seems to be back in the groove now? Uh, under supervision, I thought he would go to the Ultima. It looks like he's been pulled out of that. Old favourite, Sporting John, Windsor Avenue, Neville's Cross, Cooper's Cross, obviously, who was fighting at the finish with Galore before he fell in the Skybet chase at Donny. Um, brilliant race, five to two Cooper's Cross, and then whatever price you want after that. What do you, what do you fancy in this? Um, I'm probably I'm I'm probably being a bit lazy, you know, that way. <laughs> but I was I was happy for Stuart and Sam the other day. Uh well not I wasn't no, to be fair. I I you know I was I was shouting the other horse home that, that came down, but I he he was a good winner that day, Joe. And like you then you'd had Cap Nord, he bet Cap Nord, who we seen win at Ascot. Um he was ninth last week, wasn't a bad ninth either. Second to Manila Drama. I know you have a bit of a, a fused, frictionless relationship with Manila, but he went out and won uh, two weeks ago. He was third to Brave Seska as well, who I really like. Tipped up here at 12 to 1 when she won, and she's a very good horse of um, Venetia's as well. So I like that bit of form. And, and the way I think he could have got second that day to Brave Seska. So Cooper's Cross for me, he's in the old team at 25 to 1. He won't be 25 to 1 if he wins this, I don't think. I also like under supervision of um, Sammy, and I just really liked him. He was unseated the last day behind Cooper's Cross, so we'll forget about that. Uh, he was taken down by a faller. So yeah. can we really say he was unseated? He was third to Eva's Oscar. Love Eva's Oscar. Um, he was third to him in December and Eva's Oscar ran a very good race four days ago in fourth. Uh, he was fourth to Le Milos um, in Sandown in February 2020. He won a three mile beating Malarkey at Doncaster in March 2020, who was only beaten by a nose uh, to Musical Slave. 
uh, my point with him is, is that he runs at Newbury as well tomorrow. So Mr. Malarkey, keep an eye on him as well. If you're going to go the under supervision route, see how under supervision runs and then put your money on, let it swap over onto Mr. Malarkey. Out of the two of them, Cooper's Cross, I'd be, have probably more confidence in. But if under supervision stays up this time, he'd probably come for Cooper's Cross. Yeah, I'm um, very similar to you under supervision. I, I like him massively. He's just very, very frustrating. I mean, I would have liked to see him in the Ultima. He's not going there. Um, he's got a featherweight here, 10 stone three. Just the ground worries me with him. I think he needs a bit more cut. And he, he's had some bad luck. I mean, going back to 21. 21 at so Cheltenham he kind of like ran out after the last when he I think he had yeah. the beating of does he know but since then does he know has gone on a bit of a roll he seems to be back back in the groove and back to the horse they thought he was um, one that kind of stand out for me even though the money is coming I know it's for under supervision which does worry me a bit I'm thinking I haven't tipped the money's coming but I do like Castle Robin um, very good nice. at Sandown last month up four pound which I'm quite happy with. Front runner, as you know, I like a good front runner. Um, bold jumper. I just do think, does he know he's the class in the race? Under supervision, potentially. But Castle Robin, I think they're going to struggle to give the weight to him. Ryan Hughes on, champion jockey. Um, five to one. Castle Robin for me. Very close race. And I would like to see under, under supervision. If he wins, yeah, I'll be pleased. But, Castle Robin for me. I think as well, Joe, it's, it's good to know as well for Sammy Twist and Davis to be doing that weight, you know, as well. He's kind of like, he's probably hasn't had a dinner for 10 days. That has to be a serious, yeah. you know, like to get down to that. So, I mean, whatever about the ground, at least he won't be sunk with weight anyway. No, no, it is close to the festival. You never know with Sammy, he might be on his way to cutting weight for one at the festival, so... Exactly, yeah. Line up with that, but yeah, under supervision, he's a good horse. Shame, shame he's not. I don't think he's entered in anything else at the festival. I think um, this would have been the aim, and then somewhere possibly entry. We'll see. It's definitely a potential to be a good horse in the future, hasn't he? Oh, definitely, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed going back over to what he has done, but he seems to. I don't know if it's. <laughs> I know a lot of people are trying to psychoanalyze Goshen, even though you're not going to have a bar of that. <laughs> but. <laughs> needs a I don't know whether it's the old head I don't know but tomorrow maybe the head will be straight yeah possibly possibly so the final race we can look at is from Newbury the 245 the Great Wood Golf Club Handicap Chase two mile four we've got two at Newbury specialists here you've got Paint the Dream who's three from four at Newbury and then you've got Zanza who we missed last time out he's five from six at Newbury and he beat my uh, hitman <laughs> hitman beat everyone but as always <laughs> Always finds one too good, frustratingly. Are you going with one of the Newbury specialists? I, I, I well, I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm three ways, Joe. I seem to be three ways the last couple of days. But um, Zamza, look, the it was nearly like he was, he was doing it for Philip. You know, it was I'm going to be the three thousand winner, and there you go. That's what you're getting. Um, and he did beat your darling. <laughs> as in your darling hitman not ben pauling's your darling <laughs> and uh he loves newbury like jesus he's just he's a sp and he nearly again like i said about shishkin smiling gone over the line the horse nearly smiled the other day going over the line um you you kind of think he'd be thinking to himself i'm delighted i'm smiling I'm, when he crossed the, the uh, i know <laughs> but you know what we say keep smiling no matter yeah. what happens um Paint the Dream won this race a year ago. He's got 12 stone on his back. I know Zamza does too, but I just, when I see 12 stone, I go, heavy, heavy, heavy. Um, third to pick Dory in the Sylvia Conti. So you can't, you can't disregard that. Fourth to Brave Man's Game, who I'm starting to get a real love in for. Did you see the pictures during the week, Joe, Brave Man's Game? Yeah. yeah. He lo oh my God, that's a man. Wow, 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 wow. And he was fought this uh, paint the dream now, not Brave Man's game. He was fought to Facker Du Deris in the marshes. And I I I have a lot of love for Facker Du Deris. Um I'm also I went to Google just to see if this name had a meaning. I, I'd say it's a bit of wordplay or something. Venetia Williams, only 10 to 5 to 1. Um 
Charlie Deutsch is up. Jim Aranda? Good. I was going to say, I thought you were going to dodge the horse's name and just call him Venetius. Venetius horse. <laughs> is, it, is it Jim Aranda? Jim Aranda? I think, I think that sounds about right, yeah. <laughs> call him what you like, as long as he's winning anyway. Um, he beat Warlord. Love a bit of Warlord. Um, by five and a half lengths. He made all in a handicap chase at Seoul in November. Um, and he just... It's the weight factor for me here. The 12 stone worries me with the other two. Yeah. And Venetia, she, she, you know, not only does she know style, she knows her horses. I looked, he's got a grand annual entry at 25s and a premier entry at 25 to one. So for a bit of value at five to one, I like him. Um, Zanza's seven to two and Paint the Dream is nine to four. Out of the three of them, I'd love Zanza to win because I think he's just fantastic. Sense-wise, I'm saying paint the dream. And for value, Jim Aranda, where are you going to push me? Are you going to push me? Yeah, I've got her in this race. <laughs> Zanza. Okay. Okay. Like we said, they're two newbie specialists, but my preference is actually for paint the dream. I, I personally don't see the 12 stone being an issue. He's carried it before. Um, these two are both on 12 stone for a reason. They're both miles clear on ratings. There's a massive gap between them and the rest on ratings. Then we're, the preference why I've gone for Paint Dream is he's been holding this mark all season. He's been within a couple of pounds, while Zanza has taken a huge hike after winning the Denman. So for yeah. me, with that in mind, on level ways, I think Paint the Dream is more likely to perform to that rating, if that makes sense. Whereas Zanza, I just don't think... He's got to back it up. He's got to prove that he can run with that rating, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think you're not going to forgive him either over Hitman. That's that's Definitely what not. it really is. No. <laughs> Be honest. Talking about Hitman, I think Pain Dream is the solid 158 horse. That's the way I'm seeing it. Now, I know Zander did beat Hitman, but in the back of my head, something always beats Hitman, annoyingly, for my frustration. And Paul Nichols has come out and said now that he clearly doesn't stay three miles, which... I thought he definitely would. Paul Nichols even said he definitely would. Lorcan Williams said he definitely would. Harry Cobden said he definitely would. And he didn't. And that's why Hitman is going to the Ryanair, you understand? Yeah, I, that, that, that's what I heard uh, when he was he was talking to Ruby during the week. It's the Ryanair. Yeah, yeah. So for me, paint the dream, um, 11 to 4. It's going to, be, going to be a hell of a race. It's going to be an interesting race, that's for sure. But um, yeah, is there anything else on the on the day you fancy? On the day, yeah, I've got Navin for you. A uh, little bit of Navin. I'm going with Tony Martin, the handicap and king again. I gave Thais, Thaisties, so whatever it was, she was 13 yeah. to 2 last week. She hacked up at Nace. So this horse unanswered. He won at Cheltenham at two mile five back in November. Peter Carberry and Tony Martin together, five to one, the three ten. I, uh, I'm i definitely going to have a little poke. And then we've got the Flying Bolt Novice Chase, which has Flame Bearer in it. Barnacullia, who I mentioned last night, he's by Ocavango, who is Champ Kylie's dad. You've got Hador, um, Hollow Games, and Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, I big up because he's Mighty Potter's half brother out of that really good mare, Matney, who's given us really, really good graded. Uh, horses out of all of them we were both disappointed about Hador Joe we really were the last day but it was ground and he did meet impervious impervious is a weapon I'm not going to say uh, it's not but still um second to El Fabiola at Punchestown Festival um and beat the golfer who we seen win at Dublin Racing Festival by 11 lengths so the ground is right for him tomorrow um, they're all going with Flame Bearer, Willie's other horse, but I really like Hador. He's three to one, I think you can have him for, yeah, and he's right. 30 trees for the Oracle, 50s for the Turners. So he's probably going to be a bit like Phil Dore two weeks ago when he hacked up at the Red Mills and he was like 50 to one or something, and he's stuck at 50 to one, but I, I, I like Hador. And Danny Mullins is up, and Danny is just... He, he, he's incredible he's just he's he's a star the star was always there but now he has ascended um then you've got 
the veterans race at Navin as well. Um, your old mate Birchdale is out. Birchdale, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And horse. Good old Glen Lowe. Good old yeah. Glen Lowe. Uh, he's the one, right? The 2,266 days since he's won with Barry Garrett, Joe. So there's a bit of history for you. And he was just done on the nod by Dell to work in the pre temps in 2018. So it'd be lovely to see him back winning. Um, and then on Sunday, because I'm going to do a shameless shout out, my mare country queen uh, wins. I was about to say, Jesus, <laughs> I've been a bit premature, but she's in the mare's handicap at Leopardstown. It's the jumps finale at Leopardstown on Sunday and Monday. And anybody who goes, if you're lucky enough to stay around afterwards, usually some of the Cheltenham horses do a piece of work. But uh, my girl, Corrie McGivern, has taken a valuable seven off. The only other horse I see is the danger is Liz Lucky, who Pat Foley trains. And Pat Foley trained a very good winner in Rebels Goal last week at Nace. He's only down the road for me as well. Dermot Weld has a See the Stars bumper horse out um, called Saturn. John Gleeson is up, who is, you know, Brian Gleeson's son, who Niall Hoolan was talking about, good friends with Niall Hoolan, very good rider. and. Just my hall pass, Joe, tomorrow with all the luck in the world to my trainer, to Jack Madden, to everybody in Colna Tra. Coachello is running. He won a couple of weeks ago in Dubai. He beat a very good Godolphin horse. Pat Dobbs is back up. His draw is fantastic. It's Super Saturday tomorrow. He's 13 to 2. He'll be there or thereabouts. Royal Muse, he was Diva, he is Diva Racing's. Diva Racing also have Captain Tomcat. William Buick's up. Very, very good winner back in January. He's four to one. And Michael O'Callaghan, like I said, he's sending two half brothers out um, for Super Saturday. Fastnet Crown, who ran against McTeague. And also I Am Superman, who's a very good globe trotter. So I got my little hall pass in there, which I'm delighted about. And I know you fell asleep as I was talking flat. <laughs> Uh, the one, the one I, I've got one, just another bet tomorrow to maybe look at, and that's in the twenty-five past three at Newby. That's oh, I'm sure why have I said this? Gypsy de Choisal. I think that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> Simon Minear horse, Nicky Anderson, uh, Daryl Jacobs on nine to two, very lightly raced. Um, don't think we've seen the best him yet. I do think he's got a handicap in him, and his mark could be quite lenient. Um, and one I've got my eye on for future bigger targets. I do think he could be nicely handicapped in the future for a big one so I think he just needs to grow, grow up a bit once he grows up he'll be a very good horse so yeah I'm not going to say it again just the uh, Nicky Anderson horse in the 25 past three at Newbury the double green team the double there green we go. team that'll do that'll do <laughs> when I was when I was writing the things I was seeing him running I thought why have I said this one <laughs> <laughs> and Google doesn't even help it actually makes it worse now but again exactly. it's like what I was told they say it's tongue placement, Joe. So who knows? There we go. There we go. <laughs> Dawn, all the best with uh, Country Green on Sunday. And uh, thank you we'll very much. To next week, when we are back with day three and day four chat and previews with some fantastic guests. We're so, very blessed. That we are. So, Dawn, thanks again. Have a good weekend and uh, good luck Sunday. And we'll speak to you next week. Cheers, Keep everyone. Keep smiling, Dawn. Joe. <laughs>